Hey everyone, so I've got another update for the Blender Godot pipeline. Uh, we're on version 2.4 now. These updates actually completely came from the community. There were a few people asking for a particular feature and I went ahead and implemented it. So I'll get into what that is uh, in a bit. But what I wanna show you today is another workflow I've been experimenting with that I think is, is pretty powerful. Um, and it makes use of the, the asset library in Blender. So what I wanna do is I have an asset pack here from Kenny. And what I've extracted is just the GLB files. So that's like the packed, uh, the binary G, uh, GLTF files and then the texture. Um, so everything else I kind of stripped out, but we can start with this as a base. So I want to show you how to actually create that asset lib and then how we can use that with the pipeline to kind of create a quick workflow. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is just find my um, asset lib uh, folder, which I have set up here, and then all my assets that pertain to this particular uh, pack are in here. Um, and I'm just going to shift select all of the GLB files. That should be okay. I'll double check here. And we can just hit import. In terms of setting up the library, it's really not that difficult. What I would recommend you do is take a look through the collection, see what's here. Uh, and really, you just want to be importing objects. Collections get a little wacky. Uh, I'm not going to go, you know, a deep dive on library overrides and all that stuff. But when you've selected all your objects, you just right click and hit mark as asset. Um, this on my machine is like looks like it's glitching out, but I promise you uh, it is actually <laughs> it is actually working. Yeah. So now it's done. Uh, it took a minute. And so it's added to a library, but that library hasn't really been linked to Blender yet. So the next thing you need to do is just, um, actually, I'll probably save the file first. So I'll just save this as Kenny Platformer 2. I already did this before, so that's why we have Platformer 2. And then under Edit Preferences, you go to File Paths, and then you have this Asset Libraries list here. Uh, you just hit the plus. I guess we're selecting this file. so. Um, normally I've added an asset li library from outside the library file itself, but I think this should work. So if we save this and let's close it, I'm going to relaunch Blender and we'll see if we can pull things from the asset drawer uh, into our blend file. Now I will say you can get crazy with this. The amount of customization that you can put into an asset library gets, uh, gets pretty intense, but for this video, we're just going to keep it nice and short. Um, so I went to the layout tab and I switched my bottom view here to the, to the asset browser, but you can select, uh, Kenny platformer two now. So now that that's set up, you should see this. And it's basically as simple as dragging and dropping into the scene and it works pretty well. So we'll do a few different objects here and we'll set them up using the blender to get a pipeline. Um, and we'll see what it looks like on the game engine side. Now I will mention you know, I am using Blender 4.2. I'm going to be using the latest version of Godot as well. I do have a slight bug in Blender that when I try to switch to the uh, shader viewport, it worked perfectly this time for some reason. But sometimes when I sh uh, switch to the shaded viewport, it, it uh, slows way down. So I'm curious if that's, uh, that's happening to anybody else. Okay, so these objects are in the scene. What I would like to do next is actually use my uh, pipeline add-on. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, why don't we just edit these objects directly in the library? Well, I'll, I'll leave that up to you, right? You could, you could modify them in the library and then the custom properties will get attached to them there. But I think it's nicer to have the instances kind of broken out. So let's go ahead and actually install the, uh, the pipeline add-on next. So in 4.2 to do that, um, you come over here, you go install from disk, and then double click the Python file, the .py PY file, uh, and then you should get this. Hopefully it looks all good. It should say version 2.4 and now it's in here. So in this instance, I'm just going to throw together some very, very simple collisions. Um, the purpose of this video is not going to be to go through all of these different options. It's going to just be to kind of demonstrate some of the newer features. So let's just make this one a box. So this is a reasonable candidate to just be a box collision, right? So we'll do box static body, just hit set collision. You do see that origin moves. Um, that's just a byproduct of how the, the add on works in order to get that bounding box perfectly wrapped on the object. Uh, this one, we definitely could use a, uh, I've, it's been called simple before. And to be honest, I can't even remember where I, that term came from, if it was from me or from someone else, but really this is a convex hull uh, collision. So. Someone was asking me, what's a simple collision? And I said, 
I probably need to put convex in there somewhere. But let's do, um, and I've added some other body types here. Let's do an animatable body 3D, so we'll hit set there. Uh, this one also is a reasonably good candidate for a convex collision. So let's do maybe an area 3D. And then this one, we'll con we can just do a cylinder as a rigid body. So that is all set. Um, probably what I need next is a blender project. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so here we are. Um, let's go to the asset lib. And let's look for, just type in Blender. Usually you can find it right here, Blender Ghetto Pipeline. Uh, now I will mention this says v version 2.3 right now. By the time this video launches, you should be seeing 2.4. I'm gonna try to line everything up so it synchronizes. But we can just download that and hit install. And you should see a few files under here. So the next thing I usually recommend people do, and this was, um, once again, someone in the community figured this out, but a really nice workflow is go to project settings, import defaults, uh, come down to scene, and then scroll down, and then you have import script here. You can actually set the import path for every model that gets imported. So it's just an add-ons, uh, the pipeline, and then GLTF importer. So I probably haven't explained this too much, but the importer uh, is in two steps, actually. The GLTF importer.gd does part of the importing. It actually parses out the GLTF file itself. And then the scene in it does a lot of scene modification stuff. Um, there probably is a better workflow using the GLTF document extension class. So if someone wants to go ahead and write a, a better pipeline than I have, I would encourage you to do so. I just don't have necessarily the time to rewrite everything from scratch. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that and then hit save and close. So at this point, we should be okay um, to jump back to Blender now and actually set up this export path. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit the folder. So here's our um, project folder. We can create a new folder. I'll usually just call it assets. That's normally how I organize it. And then, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just call this assets, I guess. Not a very creative name today that should be okay. So this button, um, it is the same as the, like if you just do, if you just do export uh, GLTF, it is the same as this, except this dialog, you have to hand pick all these options. And sometimes you might need to do that. So maybe I need to mention that, uh, you know, at certain points, if you really need custom settings in here, this is still what you should be doing. And you should use GLTF separate. That's what Godot recommends. Uh, the bin and the texture file are separate. And, uh, but this button here basically just does a lot of these settings for you and exposes just a few to make it kind of easy. So let's go ahead and export it. Um, just, this would be a normal export. I haven't shown you anything new yet. If we come back over here, uh, we're probably going to want to make a 3d scene and we can drop, uh, drop this guy in and there we go. So this is what we expect. This is what the normal pipeline does. Um, and for those of you who are new, you can kind of actually see the collision shapes it's created. Let's turn off uh, some of this other stuff so we can get a better visual. But if we look at the barrel, we can just remove the mesh and you see it just leaves that simple cylinder collision. So hopefully you see how simple that was. The add-on the add automates a lot of these things for you. And let's look at a couple of these other ones. You can see that's a more complicated collision for sure. It's a convex hull collision. And what else do we have? This one's also convex hull. So yeah, there you go. And then this one should be a very simple collision. It should be just a, um, yeah, just a cube. And what you can see on the left is we're doing a whole bunch of different body types, static body, rigid body, area 3D, animatable body 3D. I will mention that there is a character body 3D here, but I got to offer some caution on this. Um, if you have a skeleton, that's rigged and has animations on it, this is not going to work under this pipeline. And the reason, unfortunately, it has nothing to do with how the pipeline is configured. It has to do with Godot not allowing uh, things that are animated to be reparented easily. No limitations, right? You should not use this pipeline for animated skeleton meshes. Uh, Godot does not support reparenting animated skeleton meshes. It breaks the animation links. So I've spent a lot of time on this, can't quite figure it out. Um, it is still possible to work with animations and physics bodies as long as there's no skeleton involved. But when you bring the skeleton in, it just uh, does not play nice. 
All right, so let's finally look at some of these new features. The new features are individual origins and individual packed resources. Um, let's look at individual origins first. I did have somebody ask for this and I don't know exactly how you would want to use this, but let's check it and then hit export. We'll see what happens. So now on the Godot side, let's bring the, um, let's bring the axes back at least. Yeah. Um, it actually smashes them all together and they all share the same origin. Uh, you know, once again, I can't quite wrap my head around how you might want to use this, but there are people who have been asking for this. Maybe they want to write their own scripts to then displace these objects or something like that, right? Uh, so that works. And the other one is the individual packed resources. So let's go ahead and just re-export with nothing set to get this state back. Um, and now let's, let's do individual packed resources. So this is a new feature. Uh, I'm really happy with how it worked out. It seems to be working pretty nicely. If we check this one and press export, what you're going to get, what you're going to notice down here is we have a packed scenes folder. All right. So the add on generated a whole bunch of packed scenes for each one of these instances. And rather than this being a rigid body with its own, you know, uh, tree underneath it, it's a packed scene that you can actually click and go into. So what you'll notice is we do have the mesh, we have the body and then collision shape, but it's not uh, at the origin. So that's where the previous checkbox comes in. If you check both of these, right, um, and you press export for Godot, then the scene is still maintained. However, the origins for each of the pack scenes are individual. So if you actually click on each one, the origins match the origin of that mesh. Uh, it'll actually match the origin that was defined. Um, but I do think this is a very useful feature. I want to use it myself. I haven't yet, but I can see how um, you know, the point of it is to be able to kit bash, not necessarily kit bash, but you could design a whole bunch of different objects here in Blender. I don't know, let's grab another one, right? Maybe this is going to be a rigid body or a uh, box rigid body. We hit set and then export. You automatically get this packed scene, right? And it just, it just brings it in really fast. And then you can jump to that scene and you can see exactly what this is made out of. So then you can use this game object, you know, as you would normally. Um, I'm not going to go over all the rest of the features, but just to talk about them here in the add on, probably the most powerful thing is this path setting thing, which can look a little bit intimidating at first, but this lets you set just about any property of this object in Godot. You can attach it here in Blender. Um, meaning you can attach a GD script file, you can attach materials or shaders. Um, you can do a nav mesh, which is a custom feature of the, the, the add on same with multi mesh. That's a highly customized feature. Um, you can set a physics material, which is a TRS file parameter file. Uh, I've talked about that in previous videos, but it's just a line delimited file that allows you to set, you know, any of the properties that are here. So any of the properties you see in the editor, actually, as well as any properties that you create in your script. Um, it will set those via that file. And then there's the string setter as well. Uh, maybe I should show this. I don't think I've showed this in any, any video yet. But if I wanted to set, set the collision layer to, I don't know, layer two, you can just do collision layer equals, now it's binary, so I'm probably doing this wrong, uh, two, let's try set string, and then export. So, yeah, I'm probably doing something. Okay, so I know what I did there. Um, this is a little caveat. I'm actually glad I'm showing this. When you hit export, this scene has to be open in Godot. It's a little quirk that was actually only introduced recently. I think version 4.3 of Godot, something has changed on the back end, uh, and it actually requires this scene to be open. So you do see all these errors here. Let's do that again. If I save this to collision layer four, which would be, I think, the third layer technically, right? Back in thinking of binary as well. If we do export for Godot, and we'll take a look at this pack scene, collision layer is now on three, right? Which the bit value is four. So you could do uh, one and then use the vertical bar four if you wanted it to be on layer one and four. So set string and then export. And then there we go. So I guess my point is you can modify any of these properties. This allows you to set a, a single property, right? So if we look at the custom properties down here, um, you do have the single property. This was once again, another suggestion by someone else. Let's try, uh, let's try collision mask equals two. 
Let's see if that works. Yeah, there you go. So if you wanted to set multiple properties, you could set a layer, you could set a custom mask, you can set anything from here, but you can also do it from a property file, which I've showed before. Um, so I think I'm kind of rambling at this point. I hope you found this helpful. Um, this is going to be in the latest version. All the updates should be synchronized on the asset store and we're now on uh, version 2.4. Uh, so please let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if this is something you could use in your workflow, let me know. Um, and the only other shout out I'm going to make is that if you have other suggestions on how this should work, please jump into our Discord. Uh, I'll try to put the link below, but otherwise you can find all my stuff on michaeljared.ca. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.